We're asked to solve sine x equals negative square root two divided by two for all solutions. Give degree answers, use k to represent any integer. The first thing to recognize here is that the sine function value is negative. On the coordinate plane, sine theta is equal to y divided by r, which means the sine function is negative where y is negative. And y is negative in the third and fourth quadrants. The next step is to ignore the negative sign for a moment and find the reference angle that has a sine function value of square root two divided by two. Once we find this angle, if we sketch the reference angle in the third and fourth quadrants, the sine function value will be negative. Having a sine function value of square root two divided by two should remind us of a 45, 45, 90 reference triangle shown here. Since sine theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, sine 45 degrees is equal to one divided by square root two, which if we rationalize the denominator does give us square root two divided by two, which means the reference angle is 45 degrees. The next step is to sketch a reference angle of 45 degrees in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. And let's also sketch the reference triangles. In the third quadrant, the opposite side is negative one, the adjacent side is negative one, and the hypotenuse is square root two. In the fourth quadrant, the opposite side is negative one, the adjacent side is one, and the hypotenuse is square root two. Notice both reference triangles give a sine function value of negative one divided by square root two, which is equal to negative square root two divided by two. Next, all of the angles that are coterminal to these two angles also give a sine function value of negative square root two divided by two. Let's begin by determining the least positive angle in the third quadrant, this angle here. Well, this angle is equal to 180 degrees plus 45 degrees or 225 degrees. So let's start with x equals 225. But then again, any angle that's coterminal to this angle will also give a sine function value of negative square root two divided by two. To find all the coterminal angles to this angle in the third quadrant, we add multiples of 360 degrees, which gives us plus 360k, where the units of this expression would be degrees. And now to determine the least positive angle in the fourth quadrant that has a sine function value of negative square root two divided by two, which would be this angle here. Well, this angle is equal to 360 degrees minus 45 degrees, or 315 degrees which gives us x equals 315 degrees, but then to find all the coterminal angles to this angle, we add multiples of 360 degrees, which gives us plus 360k, where again the units on the expression would be degrees. So these two expressions represent all the solutions to the given equation. Now let's verify this using the unit circle. Remember on the unit circle, sine theta is equal to y, and again we know y is negative in the third and fourth quadrants. So to solve the equation using the unit circle, we look for a y coordinate equal to negative square root two divided by two, which we see here at 225 degrees, as well as here at 315 degrees. And if we want all the angles that are coterminal to these two angles, we get the same solutions of x equals 225 plus 360k degrees, as well as x equals 315 plus 360k, again, degrees. Finally, let's verify our solutions graphically. Here I've graphed y equals sine x in red and y equals negative square root two divided by two in blue. Notice how there's an infinite number of points of intersection, which is why there's an infinite number of solutions to the equation. The first angle we found in the third quadrant is represented by this point of intersection here, where x is equal to 225 degrees, and if we add 360 degrees to this angle, that would give us 585 degrees. If we add another 360 degrees, we have 945 degrees and so on. And of course, we can move in the negative direction by subtracting multiples of 360 degrees. Then in the fourth quadrant, the first angle we found was 315 degrees. If we add 360 degrees to this, we get 675 degrees. At 360 degrees again, we get 1035 degrees and so on. And of course, we can also subtract multiples of 360 degrees to move in the negative direction. So this graph does verify 
our solutions are correct. I hope you found this helpful.